Void Mage Gamer is now partnered with Flipside Gaming, so you can use the promo code on their website, all caps, Void Mage, to get 10% off all orders, $10 or more. It's a great way that you can support both Flipside Gaming and Void Mage Gamer's channel. Hello guys, welcome back to another Top 10 Commander video. Returning to three color Top 10s, these are a pain to do because there are only so many cards to choose from. And a lot of these rankings are just going to be about which commander feels better than the other ones. And I am a stickler for design. If something seems simple, I'm a lot less likely to put it at the top of the list unless it sees like universal playability and it's just a staple. But this is the Bant list. We got a commander deck that was Bant colored last year, focused around enchantments. So you see an enchantment theme with some other strategies of the past. But let's start it off here with the honorable mentions. There's just a couple cards here. Castia the Cultivator. I want this to be a good commander so badly but it just is enchantment creatures or enchanted creatures attacking and getting you card draw with no actual end game other than just a solid engine here i'm gonna be brewing i'm gonna try to make a good version of this and i'll give you guys the deck tech but in the past year she's been out i've just seen really nothing interesting from kestia and i feel like with the whole theros block and just a good number of enchantment creatures out there there should be a solid deck to build around her and then of course angus mckenzie just a super expensive commander option and not necessarily necessarily one that I'm a big fan of, but I don't know, there's probably a whole lot of people that think that the definition of fun is just fogging every turn. So go ahead and spend hundreds of dollars on your Legends Commander options. Let's start it off here with the actual list. Number 10 is Finest Hour, the exalted enchantment that gives your creatures the extra plus one plus one if they attack alone. That's cool, but you get an additional combat. So exalted is the whole bant mechanic that encouraged you to attack alone because it makes that creature bigger. It also gives you the extra combat. So if you really love your one creature that you have on the field, Finest Hour is going to allow you to swing again, maybe with some of your other creatures as well. Usually this is a red effect, something you see a lot out of red sorceries. And seeing it in Bant, it is an Alara strategy with Bant to be more combat focused, and that's where we got the whole Exalted mechanic from in the first place. But not really an enchantment that I see across multiple decks. It is is very much geared towards one style of Bant, so not going to be any higher for me. Number 9 is Rune of the Hidden Realm. I remember playing with that pre-con deck in 2013 with Derevi, thinking, you know, she's pretty cool. Rune was awesome for me when I first got into Commander around Commander 2013, because it was just good ETB creatures within Bant, and there's a ton to choose from. I remember ruining people's days with Acidic Slime, and of course Deadeye Navigator, plus literally anything is a ton of fun. But as time went on, I started to realize that he's a lot slower than I'd like him to be, and there's just a ton of other commanders to choose from that just do blink a lot better. Brago King Eternal, while not giving you access to green, enables you to do the same exact thing you want to do with other permanents like artifacts. You can reset Planeswalker loyalty counters. Rune having a slower tap ability, only being able to do it to one creature, does affect the efficiency of the deck. But overall though, if you want to go with a blink commander, I still would recommend him. He is quite underrated now because of the fact that so many people go with Brago or even that Aminatu check. Not quite the power that I remember him having though. Number 8 is Tuvasa the Sunlit. A lot of people are into these kinds of commanders that just get you one card draw a turn. Try to play that control game. It can be incredibly consistent. You also have the benefit of playing a pseudo Voltron style, although I see some people that try to do that. They don't do it entirely. They don't commit purely to just playing a ton of enchantments like Rancor. They just go for that extra bit of card draw, and that's fine too. You could make a solid control deck, anything that just gets you consistency and card draw. Keep your deck going. You do have the benefit benefit though of a massive creature if you're able to get your enchantments out there consistently all you really need is something like a rancor and you can threaten commander damage not something that i think is the most interesting from that deck in commander 2018 but if what you're looking for is an enchantment themed voltron deck that's capable of replenishing your hand every one of your turns so a reasonable condition for refilling your hand even if it's just a little bit just one card that's good consistency in any deck Number seven is a longtime favorite for many people in these colors, Rafik of the Many. Now, if you're going for Voltron and you want to be taken seriously, play Rafik of the Many. Because like I mentioned with Finest Hour, the whole Alara block went in more of a combat-focused strategy for Bant, and Exalted is just brutal when you couple it with Double Strike. Obviously, in these colors, you have access to Trample, 
So that's pretty much the only thing you really need, because Double Strike is going to make it so much easier for you to deal commander damage. And the only real requirement is trying to get him up to at least 11 power, filling your deck with a ton of good things like swords. I'm going to bring up Rancor again because it's probably the most efficient aura that you can put into your deck. It just satisfies that need to deal more damage. And I'm going to mention this yet again, I've mentioned it in previous videos, not the biggest fan of Ultron strategies, but I can appreciate their power. Rafik is pretty powerful, and you don't have to go with Voltron, I know I mention that a lot too, but Rafik can be thrown into other commander decks. I've even seen Rafik thrown into something like Progenitus, and it works. Giving any creature double strike and exalted, it's stupid easy how you can win the game. Number six is Arcades the Strategist. Similar to what we want to do with Tavasa the Sunlit, just get more consistency in card draw, and throwing that in with something like Doran the Siege Tower, you have a relatively unique strategy, especially in Bant, where the whole point is just dealing with creatures that have Defender. Pretty much does the whole trick that Doran did, where they're going to deal damage equal to their toughness instead of their power. But this time though, it pretty much allows defenders to attack as if they didn't have defender. So you kind of add on to adjusting the rule book and altering the game in your favor. And that's really cool when you see that on a commander. Definitely one of the more interesting Bant commander options that you can go with. And while it doesn't lend itself to universal playability, having a unique identity of its own, it's a reason why I would definitely recommend it. Number five, we have Bant Charm. One of the better charms that you can play, at least the three color charms in Commander. You have artifact or creature removal, in addition to countering an instant spell. A little all over the place with how it removes things. It destroys the artifact. It puts a creature on the bottom of its owner's library. A little hard to remember sometimes those facts. The fact that you're able to deal with problems and multiple problems, different situations, all with one card, it's quite spectacular. There are a ton of artifacts to choose from in the commander format. They're just as popular as they are in any other format, and you're going to see a wide variety of them. Creatures are, of course, always a problem. If you can deal with indestructible ones, it's even better removal. Encountering an instant spell going to allow you to counter other opponents' counter spells, or really anything deadly like a Cyclonic Rift. So overall, a versatile instant, one of the better charms if you have to go with any of them in Commander. Some are pretty tame, this one is actually really good. Number four is Wargate. Tutors are pretty powerful in the Commander format. What's even more powerful is when they can just put something into play from your deck. Wargate is an X-costed spell, so it's going to be quite a lot of mana if you want to cheat something into play like a Crater Hoof Behemoth. But considering it's not like your typical Demonic Tutor, it just puts it straight into play. This can go for any permanent, though. If you want to get a good Planeswalker out there like your Ugin, go for it. If you want to get a Nevin Rolls Disc out there, go for it. It can even get you a land. You don't even have to put anything into X. So if you really wanted your Gaius Cradle, go for it. Just any permanent you can search from your deck. I think that is a huge reason why... Wargate is such a powerful card in Commander. So many combo pieces that you need. Wargate can search up literally anything. The only requirement is a ton of mana. Because 3 mana X, while it is reasonable to expect you to have the mana in Commander, it's not always the most efficient thing. It's also reasonable to expect you're probably going to spend most of your mana in a turn on wargating something out. But usually what you wargate out is worth it, so can't argue against its power. Number three is Estrid the Masked. I think a big reason why her pre-con deck was really good was because you had solid abilities here. Didn't hurt that her deck came with some pretty solid reprints, but I just cannot deny that this time around with Planeswalker Commanders, you got pretty good abilities on the enchantment one. You can untap each enchanted permanent you control with her plus two, which is just crazy. If you're the type of player that likes holding up answers, or if you like mana sinks, there are a ton of enchantments that you can throw onto lands, untapping your lands, getting more mana to work with. While it's not to fairy levels of combo, it is most certainly an enabler. Her minus one gives you the token with totem armor. You could attach it to any other target permanent which is pretty crazy. So you have a line of protection that also helps you with your plus two. It allows you to survive board wipes without really losing much. And her minus seven which is really easy to get to is really just 
the most ridiculous synergy that you can have with enchantments, bringing them all back from the graveyard. It does specify order, but you know, it's going to bring all your non aura and aura enchantments back from the graveyard, pretty much negating whatever board wipes your opponents have, so long as you're able to get Estrid the Mask up there in loyalty. All three awesome abilities could enable combos, but even if you're not playing combo, you have a very solid engine here on a commander. Number two is Derevi Imperial Tactician. Has been one of my favorite commanders because I just love Commander 2013 so much. And Derevi is pretty broken. However, we've seen some pretty devastating commander options in recent years. I feel like people are kind of ignoring Derevi now. You still have the commander that is pretty much the same amount of mana to bring out from the command zone with her ability. Never having to pay that commander tax is a huge bonus. When you do actually get her out there, you can of course manipulate tap abilities by untapping those permanents. You could also tap your opponent's creatures, make it easier for you to swing in on them. Derevi is just one of those commanders where it never feels like there's only one right way to build around her because there's just so much you can do within these three colors. You could fool around with tap abilities, you could play stacks, just want to be political and tap your opponent's creatures. That's also a way you could go. A lot of fun things to do with Derevi, but not super overpowered like a lot of people might believe. And then that brings us to number one, what I feel is number one in Bant, and that is Tamiyo Field Researcher. I'm usually going to go for something I feel is more universally playable and also offers quite a bit of versatility and power. Tamiyo gives you a little bit of everything. Her plus is an incentive to attack with creatures you feel like are going to deal combat damage. You could of course just do this on your creatures or on your opponents. Maybe they think twice about attacking. I found that most likely people forget about it altogether. Her minus two is awesome control. Tapping down up to two target non-land permanents is a great way to slow your opponents down and enough has been said about her alt it's omniscience and ancestral recall two really powerful spells put together on one alt let's just say if you ever get to her alt there's no reason why you should lose the game overall though very powerful planeswalker sees play everywhere from bant to super friends she's a pretty flexible planeswalker anyway that's going to do it for this list of the top 10 bant cards in the commander format you guys have a wonderful day for your signing off